Hey there YouTube, Wrestling Optimus here, back with another unboxing video. And to all the ladies out there, this guy just brought home six figures last month. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. But first, if you're new here, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more pro wrestling and action figure content. Now, let's get to unboxing. First, I want to show off my current Adam Cole and Roderick Strong figures. As you can see, they're both WWE basics. And why is that important? Because I got Bobby Fish also with the green trunks. So that's going to be the first figure we take a look at today. Looking at it from here, he has the Undisputed Era logo, just like Roderick Strong. But in addition, he's got this Undisputed Gold tank top. Taking a look at the rest of the packaging, this is part of Series 126. And this series also contains Seth Rollins, Drew McIntyre, Mandy Rose, and a Macho Man Randy Savage. Looks like WWE considered him a technician while he was there. But as we know, he's not there anymore. He has gone to AEW. So he's going to be going into the AEW drawer after we let him breathe. I just went and moved all of his joints around. They're pretty good. The shins are a little bit loose here. But one thing I noticed immediately was that he does not stand up very well. That was a little disappointing. I did notice that he has an Undisputed Era armband, just like Adam Cole and Roderick Strong. But getting back to the Bobby Fish figure, this is a problem I have seen on every single Bobby Fish figure. It doesn't look like the camera's really picking up just how bad this figure's face is. There we go. Look at that. What is with the jankety teeth? What is with that evil grin and those messed up eyebrows? And it's not just this figure, it is literally every single Bobby Fish figure I have seen. I'm not sure who was drunk on Bobby's face sculpt day, but they did him a disservice. But getting back to the rest of the figure, we see his Bobby Fish logo here on his trunks. They are the kind of longer trunks that he tends to wear. And it says infamous on the back. He does have a couple of tattoos up here on his right shoulder, and they're pretty well done. Otherwise, it's a basic, so you get what you pay for. For me at least, the face sculpt really is that bad, so I'm going to have to dock it a point and take it down to a 3 out of 5 on a basic scale. But that's not all. We need to complete Red Dragon with Kyle O'Reilly. And notice, I also got the green trunk version with the Undisputed Era on the knee pad and the armband. This figure was part of Series 124. It's also a basic, and if we look at the back, it came with Seth Rollins, Rey Mysterio, Angel Garza, and Io Shirai. Not much else to say about this, other than let's let it breathe. All right, that's a lot better. Unlike Bobby Fish, he stands up just fine. Taking a look at him up close, he's got a much better face sculpt than Bobby Fish. He's also got some nice tattoos there on his rib cage. With his knee pads, we've got the Undisputed Era in green and his KO logo, which uh, I think Kevin Owens might have some gimmick infringement claims on there. On the back, he's got an Undisputed Era logo here as well. And there's not much else to say. He's a basic figure. The thing with basics is you really only just got to get the basics right. And this one does. So I'm going to give it a 5 out of 5 on the basic scale. Now we put the entire group together and isn't it beautiful? I do know Roderick Strong has a little bit left on his contract, but once it's done, I think he has all the reason in the world to go to AEW. Not only are all these guys already there, but his wife Marina Shafir also just signed with AEW. 
Now, it would have been nice to get elite versions of all these guys, but it was a little bit cost prohibitive, and I already had Roderick Strong and Adam Cole, so it was better to just get Red Dragon with the green trunks than to go get elites of everybody. I will say I'm happy with my purchases, and that's all that really matters in the end. But for now, we're gonna put these three in the AEW drawer, and poor Roderick Strong goes back in the NXT drawer. Now let's move on to our next figures. And speaking of AEW, we're going with a first in the line, Jake Atlas, who just got signed by AEW and unfortunately got injured in his first Dynamite match. That's okay, he is under contract, so he's gonna come back after the injury. The really cool thing about this figure is that it's the Chase variant. His normal figure has black trunks, but this white trunk version is the one I managed to get online. Right off the bat, if you take a look at the picture of him and the face sculpt, it's really, really well done. This is part of series 123, and looking at the back, this came with Braun Strowman, who was released, Bobby Lashley, Otis, and Dexter Loomis. Anyway, with basics, there's not much else to say other than let's let it breathe. The joints aren't too stiff, and he passes the stand test with flying colors. So far, I'm loving this figure. He does have a nice open fist, so he can handle a microphone, and he has a closed fist, so he can punch people in the face. Bringing him closer to the camera, and hopefully it stays in focus. We got a really wonderful head sculpt, like I said earlier, and we got some nice patterns on his knee pads. Seems to be kind of maybe Mexican inspired or whatever his ethnicity is. We have the Atlas logo on both sides. And then we have some more artwork on this knee pad. No tattoos and no accessories, so we only have a limited amount of information to go off of. However, he gets all the basic stuff right, so I give this a 5 out of 5 on a basic scale. And as I mentioned, he's going in the AEW drawer. Now it's time for the only AEW unrivaled figure for the day. That's right, I finally got an official AEW Chris Jericho. For reference, until now, I've been using this Chris Jericho figure, which is actually from the Festival of Friendship special set that was released with the Kevin Owens figure as well. And if you've ever noticed, my backstage setup has the Festival of Friendship TV that breaks apart if you slam a figure into it. However, I just use it as a backstage monitor. Anyway, it's never made too much sense that I use this figure because not only does he have this permanent jacket, but he has a short haircut like his last few days in WWE. The cool thing about upgrading to this unrivaled figure is not only does he look more accurate, but he comes with the right hairstyle and another AEW World Championship belt. Now, because he was arguably the biggest star at the launch of AEW, Chris Jericho has a bunch of official figures. But because I already had a figure of him that I could use, getting one of him was pretty low on the priority list. But this one that I finally got is number 45 as part of Series 6 of the Unrivaled Collection. Taking a look at the back, this collection included Jake Hager, MJF, Hikaru Shida, Penta L0M, and Ray Phoenix. Now the Lucha Brothers, this was their second time getting figures, so I didn't buy those particular ones. I also didn't get the MJF because that was his second as well. However, I did get Jake Hager and Hikaru Shida as part of this line. So now I officially have half of this series. Up top, we have the fake signature from Le Champion, as well as a picture when he wore this outfit to take on John Moxley at Revolution on February 29th, 2020 in Chicago, Illinois. Spinning it around, it does look like we're not going to get many accessories other than the championship belt, so let's let it breathe and find out. 
and here's what he looks like out of the box. I'm actually really glad that I got this fairly no frills Jericho because I can use him in a variety of situations, unlike some of the one-off outfits that they've made for his other figures. Now, does anybody else think that they made this figure look a little bit chubbier? Was that on purpose, or am I just kind of seeing things? Either way, unfortunately, it's kind of accurate. Now, I already have an AEW World title belt. I believe it came with my John Moxley figure. We'll just take a look at this beauty real quick, and then set it aside. Bringing the figure a little bit closer to the camera, I really like the face sculpt. I do kind of wish he wasn't screaming, but let's face it, Jericho's always screaming. While I've got the camera in focus, I hope you can see that the eyes are really well done on that face sculpt. I like the long hair, and he's wearing that Le Champion bandana. The tattoos are really well done, with a lot of attention to detail. That's kind of a hallmark of the Unrivaled collection. We'll spin him around a little bit here. Not much to say on the back other than he's just kind of wearing all black. We'll keep going and yeah, I do need to take the plastic off his uh, stomach there. On the front, we've just got a little bit of detailing in yellow. Again, not much to this figure, but that's also kind of why I got it. So. For an Unrivaled, I will dock a point just because there's not a lot of accessories or anything. But on an Unrivaled scale, I'm gonna give it a four out of five. I'm really happy with the purchase. Finally, we move back to WWE. And the reason that I wanted to do this video, even though I only had six figures to open today, and that's because Royal Rumble is on Saturday and I'm probably gonna do a video for it. That's why I needed a Damien Priest. This is my first Damien Priest figure, and I wanted to get him just in time for the Paper Wait Premium Live event. This appears to be brand new packaging for the Elite Collection, and although it still says True Effects Lifelike Details up here, there's now this strange Certified Authentic sticker on the side. Spinning it around, it looks like Series 89 also comes with Drew McIntyre, Dominic Mysterio, Bobby Lashley, Sergeant Slaughter in his Iraqi sympathizer days, and a Nia Jax. I'm not gonna get this Nia Jax because I already have one and well, she got released, but I saw it in the store and it's arguably the best Nia Jax figure I've ever seen. But getting back to Damien here, he's from New York, he's 6'5", he's 249, and his finisher is the Hit the Lights. His career highlight is being NXT North American Champion, but that should get updated to say he's the current United States Champion. And I do believe he'll be defending that at Royal Rumble. So let's spin it back around. I can already see what's really cool is we got two extra sets of hands and he's got this awesome cross necklace. Can't wait to check that out once we let it breathe. With a new line comes new backgrounds, so we'll see if I can use this red one somewhere in my display. Setting that aside though. As for the figure, all the joints move just fine and it passes the stand test. Looking at the hands that came with the figure, he's got a right closed fist and a left open fist. Here are the hands, we get open palms. And we get another closed fist and an open fist. What's really nice is in addition to the skin color being a little bit different than most hands, he also has a ring on his middle finger. So in my pile of hands, I can always find his. One of the first things I noticed when I was doing the stand test was unlike most figures with long hair, I'm able to manipulate his head and go up and down with a lot of ease. For whatever reason, his hard plastic hair does not get in the way of him looking up. So that's pretty cool. 
He comes with this awesome black vest. So spinning around. Not much detailing on the back, but it is really soft plastic. So it comes off really easily. And then here we see that cross necklace I was talking about. His gear is purple, as you can see, with gray and black trim. We've got all this kind of fish netting and like chains and buckles and straps, as well as on the back pockets. And then this crisscross pattern on the crotch. He's got a ton of tattoos. So I really hope that the camera can pick up some of these. Getting really close to the camera, I think you can see how good those tattoos are. You can also see how nice that face sculpt is. I think it looks just like Damien Priest, so that's a big plus and definite points on the final score. We'll spin him around here so you can see. He's got a little wisp of hair over the shoulder. More fantastic tattoo work on the back. And then coming back to the front, we have that elite torso movement. And yeah, I really like this. I wish he came with like a weapon or something like that. Maybe an NXT North American Championship belt since you're bragging about it so much. But otherwise, I love this figure. I'm going to give it a 5 out of 5, even on a WWE Elite scale. Last but not least, another figure that I need for Saturday, Dominic Mysterio. First time in the line, it comes with a really cool kendo stick, an extra set of hands. I'm already liking this figure. Just like I said on the last one, it's part of this new Elite series. It's got this weird certified authentic sticker. And I already showed you the back. This is part of the exact same Series 89. So let's just crack this one open and let it breathe. Out of the box, he passes the stand test just fine, but his joints were really, really stiff. I was able to loosen him up by playing with him a little bit though. He comes with open mic holding fists, but he also comes with an extra set of closed fists for punching. However, the cool thing is that he comes with this massive kendo stick. And just for size comparisons, this is the kendo stick that I believe came with my Hikaru Shida figure. Yeah, there's really no comparison between the two. This one is so much better. My first impressions are that I really like it. This outfit is great. It's got all kinds of color. It's bright in your face. We've got the crowns because Ray does mean king. And we even have some really great tattoo work. So let's bring it a little bit closer to the camera. Here we see that the face sculpt is pretty good. I guess it could be a little better, but that's just nitpicking, especially for our first time in the line. There appears to be an M on the tights for Mysterio. And let's spin him around. We've got DM on the back, as well as these kind of curls that he puts on his hood. I'm a little bit disappointed that he doesn't have the hood that he comes out with during his entrance, but again, a little bit nitpicky. Here we see that tattoo work. And I'm really liking that. Well done to the toy makers. Over here, this tattoo's even better. Unfortunately, the camera's not picking it up too well, but uh, you'll just have to trust me on that. So yeah, maybe dock like a quarter of a point because the joints were really stiff, but otherwise I'm loving the outfit. I'm loving the face sculpt, the tattoo work. It came with extra hands and an accessory. We're going with a, um, hmm, yeah, 4.75 out of 5. All right, so literally after I finished recording, I went to the store and found this. The Ultimate Kane. Kane was my favorite wrestler growing up during the Attitude Era, and this is just the best Kane ever made. It's so cool. 
it as the cape from when he debuted, and that was the only time he ever used it. And it has what I initially thought was a lightsaber, but it's his voice box. There's two different heads, one with hair that comes over the shoulder and one with hair tied back. And then the world title that he won because yes, Kane did win the WWE Championship. There's also an extra set of hands. And let's take a look at the back. It says Kane is 7 feet tall and hails from parts unknown. His finisher is the Tombstone, although he tends to use the Chokeslam more often, and yes, he was a WWE Champion. Coming over here to the display shelves, Kane is effectively retired, but this shelf is for deceased legends. So we'll come down here, but there wasn't exactly space, so I had to tuck my ultimate fiend back there behind Bray Wyatt in his Firefly Funhouse, and we're going to be setting my cane right about there. And so now he is on display, along with some other current wrestlers like The New Day and Jurassic Express, your current AEW Tag Team Champions. All right, that's going to do it for today's unboxing video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to do all that normal YouTube stuff. Smash the like button, share with any wrestling or action figure fans you may know, subscribe to the channel, and spread the word. You can also talk to me over on Twitter at WrestlingOptimus, or see all my best figure photography over on Instagram at WrestlingOptimus. If you haven't seen my epic year-long endeavor, the Complete Pickle Predictions Championship League Rewind, you can check that out right here. But until next time, I've been Wrestling Optimus, and I'll catch you later.